All right, welcome back to Blue by 90. I'm Justin, joined by Kaylin today. Jack is out, but we've got a special guest, Carter Elliott from the Field of 68 and Multiplicity Media. There, I feel like there's like a, a hundred things I could introduce you as, but Carter, thanks for joining us today, man. Hey, what's going on? Appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, yeah. Give us a little background of what you're doing these days and, uh, you know, what you've got going on. Okay, yeah, for sure. So, the main thing I do is I, um, I'm i a co-host on the Sleepers Media podcast, uh, myself and my co-host, Greg Waddell, who is a Michigan fan, actually. Um, right. Me and him do that. We talk college basketball, state of Michigan, uh, you know, basketball scene and as a whole. I am the resident Michigan State fan on that <laughs> podcast, and I am a Michigan State fan. I did not wear any green today. All right, I All promise right. you. I, I, I had a chance. I was going to come with my full fit, my full jersey <laughs> hat, but I didn't do it today. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically what we do. We just talk college basketball, keep it a little fun, not as serious as other podcasts. So yeah, that's about it. There you go. There you go. And where before we get into it here, where can people find you on you know social media and stuff too? Okay, yeah, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Carter Elliott underscore underscore. I'm sorry, it's two underscores. I tried to get one. It was taken. If anyone from Twitter, you know, head office can help me get my one underscore <laughs> name back, I would love that. But it's Carter Elliott with two underscores. And then you can find all of our Sleepers content at Sleepers Media. That's on, you know, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Awesome. All right, cool. Um so, yeah. All right. Let's get into it. So the reason that we're jumping on today is because tomorrow night we're recording this on Monday uh, evening. You know, it'll come out on Tuesday morning here before the Michigan versus Michigan State game. This is not like I feel like at the beginning of the year, this would have been like for the Big Ten championship, possibly, you know, a, a you know one or two seed in the tournament or something like that. Now, you know, we're into the end of the season, the last week of the year, it's not for that, but it still is for a lot on the line, I feel like, for both teams right now. Are you feeling the same? Yeah, definitely. Um, as far as Michigan State, I mean, beside, luckily, you know, we had that big win at home against Purdue, but before that, like, sliding was an understatement. We were on a <laughs> downward spiral. We were losing games by 30 at Iowa. We were struggling. Um, we've honestly been struggling in Big Ten play all year. We've got some tough losses. We lost to Northwestern without Pete Nance. Uh, a lot of our losses, actually, to Big Ten opponents have come without their best players, even wins at that, uh, with Kofi being out when we lost to Illinois. But, you know, there's a lot on the line with this game besides bragging rights. I mean, Michigan is in a situation kind of similar to Michigan State last year. Uh, Michigan State last year had to win uh, three out of four games down the stretch against ranked opponents to even get into the playing game of the NCAA tournament. And the way the schedule is shaking out right now, I think that Michigan is in a position where they want to feel comfortable about getting to the tournament. I think that they need two out of these next three games. Um, so, you know, these, these next three games are big down the stretch. And I think this is one that they could easily win because I mean, there's the motivation factor, the fact they're playing Michigan state. We already, they already lost to us at the Breslin center pretty handedly. So there's a lot on the line in this game still. So I expect it to be like a high, high level basketball game for sure. I expect, uh, MSU will definitely bring it though. Cause I was just reading about, uh, Izzo tying Bobby Knight's record, right? And so he would love to get that all-time Big Ten wins beating his rival as well, right? How big of a factor do you think that is? Oh, for sure. I mean, you, when you talk about Michigan, Michigan State, it's like so many things on the line that aren't even like on the court type thing. Like for one, fan bases will be going at each other for a whole year about <laughs> this game, no matter what happens. I know Michigan State fans will for sure. It has to do with in-state recruiting, um, you know, the Big Ten picture, the tournament picture right now. I mean, there's a lot of things on the line in this game. And, you know, Michigan State fans, we always talk about Izzo in March. And, like, this is his month. This is when he gets it going. So, you know, the, the game is taking place in March, the first of March. So we're going to see where we're at. But I'm excited to see the game uh, for sure. Uh, I, I think that this Michigan team is a team that just – they have talent. Like, the talent is not a question. Uh, I think the talent might not be – or the depth not, might not be what Michigan fans thought it was kind of coming into the year. But when you have, like, five stars like Musa and, you know, Caleb out there, it only takes one game for them to get it going. So it's a very dangerous team, Hunter Dickinson as well. So 
Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how Michigan State plays after that win against Purdue as well. Uh, I know they're feeling really good about themselves right now. So we're going to see where they're at mentally too. Yeah, I I think, you know, Michigan and Michigan State's rosters are both similar, I think, where it's like if you look at each guy specifically, you're like, man, he could be the guy. But then, like, for whatever reason this whole season, they haven't put it together for stretches. They have put it together for one game at a time, it feels like. But then, like, Michigan especially here down the stretch, it's been like win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. They can't put two together. And then obviously MSU had that slide. And I, I mean, I think you would probably be shitting your pants a little bit if that, if without that win to Purdue, right? Like you'd probably be like, oh shit, you know, this is an absolute must win game. It still kind of is, but I think MSU is more in the, into the the bracket than than Michigan is right now. But I, I think that without that win to Purdue, Michigan state is definitely like struggling and maybe on the bubble, but now Michigan is so You know, the problem that I see, though, is like they don't have an off night for, you know, a week and a half. Right. They, you know, even the Rutgers game was tough. They obviously won that one. Then you play an Illinois team that was shooting the absolute lights out. Now you're home against MSU, who just beat one of the top teams in the country, you know, and you're without Juwan Howard. So how does Phil Martelli get this crew ready for this game, I, I, I just – it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Um, they, 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 I was just going to say they don't have a margin for error because of how they play throughout the season and earlier in the year. Like this is – it's kind of like a situation like this is the bed you – I don't even know the phrase. This is the bed you lay, so now you got to lay it in. You know, you, you know what phrase <laughs> I'm trying to say. Like they, they made this bed. They put themselves in this situation. So now they have their backs are against the wall. This is what you got to do. No team wants to get, you know, to this point of the year – and have to win games down the stretch. I can tell y'all from experience, last year as a Michigan State fan, that three weeks, that last four weeks of the season was exciting as hell, but I did not want to be in that situation. <laughs> like, that every single night we had a chance that we could miss the NCAA. Like, missing the NCAA tournament as a team like Michigan State or a team like Michigan, that just like, that doesn't happen, right? right. So, like, it, even if you want to call it, like, a bump in the road or, like, just a, just a one-off type of season, like a one-off type season is like finishing towards the bottom of the Big Ten, but also still comfortably being in the NCAA tournament. Michigan right. the t- missing the tournament is like catastrophic in my eyes. It's just something you can't do. Yeah, I mean, maybe for Michigan under like Tommy Amaker, right? But we're right. talking 15 years ago now. You know, since John Beeline joined, uh, joined or came to Ann Arbor, it's just not been like that. And so when you when you start the season out, especially uh, you know ranked in the top five, right? Preseason, like that's another part of it too. Um, Who do you see as like the biggest player that needs to step up for MSU in this game uh, tomorrow night? Uh, I definitely think it's got to be our wing players. I think part of our struggles in these past couple games is that because we're a team that doesn't really have depth at the wing necessarily, if we weren't getting anything from Max Christie or Gabe Brown, like we weren't getting anything from the wing position. Uh, and it's a situation where I think Michigan State looks really good when we like we, we have like five or six guys all scoring 10 points. We don't really have that guy. That's kind of the team we have in our makeup right now. So we don't have room for error for guys really to have extreme off nights. I mean, Gabe Brown was in one of the worst shooting slumps of his career. I've never, se- I've never seen him shoot that bad and not just shoot that bad like all his shots weren't weren't even close. They were short, looked like he was pushing it, thinking about it. So it was good to see him see some go in against Purdue. I'm sure that I'll do a lot for his mental. And also Max Christie was struggling uh, as well. So it was good to see him knock down a few shots. Uh, But I think that, you know, for Michigan State in this game, you need to realize you're going to be playing a Michigan team whose back's against the wall. Like I wholeheartedly believe we're going to get Michigan's best shot in this game. Um, and I'm interested to see how Michigan is going to play because as I was telling y'all before this, I went to the Illinois game yesterday and to me, Hunter Dickinson is one of the best centers in the country. Right. And for me in that game, when it was close in the second half, I one was wondering why Hunter wasn't getting as many post touches as far as Phil Martelli throwing it into him. 
But that's also not all on Martelli. Like, Hunter Dickinson needs to be the alpha on this team. Like, if Martelli's not going to run you some sets, like, let's see some fire. Like, go let your teammates tell them to throw you the ball. Uh, and, right. and, and that means either him scoring or him kicking out to other players. So I try to, like, tell myself, like, what is the Michigan State way to beat this Michigan team? Because if I'm drafting players, let's say, I'm probably picking five, four or five Michigan guys first, like just off pure talent. Right. Alone. But it's all about what you do in between those lines and how you play. So, you know, we already won the first matchup at the Breslin. If we go 2-0 and against Michigan, uh, you'll, be, you'll see a happy camper in myself. But, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I feel like so much of the issue with the way Michigan's played this year has been their inconsistency, right? Like the first matchup, they actually weren't too bad in the first half. It was that second half where they just totally like fell apart, right? So I'm curious if like because their back is against the wall, like you're saying, can they get that fire and can they play against an MSU team who's not playing around, right? I think I heard Martelli say something like, you know, you're going to have to strap your shoes up for this one. Some real like old man in Philly. You know, <laughs> saying. But uh, I, I just, I think you're hundred percent right on. I mean, it's going to be a really hard fought game on both ends actually. Well, and that's, that's how Izzo loves to come at this game in particular, let alone just every game is, Hey, it doesn't matter the talent on the floor. We're going to be more physical. They're going to try to be more physical than Michigan, you know, box out, out rebound. That's how Izzo likes to play. That's what makes him so special in March is because they'll go out there and they don't, you know, you don't know, know if they're going to have the best team, right? But they're going to play the hardest. They're going to do the little things. So I think if Michigan were to get in trouble tomorrow, it's because they aren't doing the little things and boxing out. They're getting out rebounded and that type of stuff. But I think for Michigan, they have to go to Hunter Dickinson, like you were saying. I, you know, I truly don't think there's anybody on MSU that can stop Hunter Dickinson uh, down low. So what I would do is I'd say, we're going to go to Hunter until they figure out a way to stop him. And then what happens when Hunter Dickinson is getting his down low is that usually opens up the floor for the, for their wings and for other, other guys to get open shots too. So I think that's, what's got to happen against Michigan. You know, MSU is probably going to go at him and try and get him into foul trouble as everybody does. And they might, right? But you got to be able to have Musa get in there a little bit himself, as well as Brandon Johns possibly off the bench. I mean, God, if we could get like one game in, in Brandon Johns' career, it would be this one, I think, right? Yeah, that, that, that would be absolutely classic. It's like <laughs> there, we had the, the Brandon Johns game against Michigan State, <laughs> and I would be in shambles if that happened. Like the one career game that Brandon Johns wants to have, he just. He just does it against state. But yeah, I mean, you in, in the first matchup, like Hunter Dickinson was was getting his. I mean, especially in the first half. In the second half, I thought he was not converting on as many layups as he usually does. It was like, you know, it sucks saying like you held a guy to 25 because like yeah. you held me to 25. I don't care how many I necessarily shot or made right. it. Like I still have I'm talking my but shit. At the end of the day, like Hunter Dickinson is shooting normally uh most times, like right around the rim. So the fact of the matter is he kind of had to work for his 25 and he was missing some shots that I thought he typically makes. So it, it seemed that Michigan State came with the approach that we are going to maybe let Hunter get his and go one on one against Hunter. And let's just cut everybody else off. And I think personally that is the way to beat Michigan, because I think back to when Michigan plays their best games this year, it's when Hunter Dickinson's able to get like his 20 ish points. But he's also able to get like five or six assists as well, kicking yeah. out the shooters. Houston's knocking it down. Devontae Jones maybe knocks down a couple. Uh, I think that's when they're at their best. But like y'all pointed out earlier, with the inconsistencies with how these guys shoot and how they knock down jumpers, you know, you never really know on a night to night basis. It's a flip of the coin. Yeah, um, it is. And I think, you know, as Kalen said, the inconsistency has been the issue. But, you know, I it's like if Michigan, if Caleb Houston all of a sudden gets his 15 points or whatever, then all of a sudden Michigan's that good of a team. Like it's it's almost that simple, right? So um, it only takes like one guy, uh, one extra guy along with Hunter to get theirs for Michigan for them to be a really good team. So we'll see if they, they can do that. Um, I wanted to get your take too on Juwan Howard. 
Uh, obviously, I'm sure you've talked about it. Everyone's talked about it. It's been, you know, overdone a little bit, I'm sure, at this point. But, you know, the take from Michigan State fans, I think, is an interesting one. Now, we've never seen Tom Izzo take a swing at anybody. So I want to get that out of the way right away, right? It's not that comparable. But he is known to absolutely berate officials all the time, right? And so, like, do you feel like there's any times – are you like – shit tom like take it back and not take it down a notch like or do you love that tom is as a spartan do you love that he's like always 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 on officials uh you know it, it, it goes both ways for me um personally like as a player i think you always want your coach to you know quote unquote fight for you or pull for you so it's like yeah i understand that but also at the same time like you're on officials constantly and it's, it's it, I don't know, it's just a bad look to me. Like, I, we all hate officials. I personally don't like them. No one, no one likes. Nobody likes them. No one likes they officials. Right. Like, yeah. no one likes when officials make it all about them. And, like, people pay good money to go watch you blow a whistle and not know what a block charge call is. Like, that's not what fans <laughs> are coming out to see. So it's like, you know, I've I, I seen, you know, Izzo's had issues with, like, he's, he's even grabbed players, you know, like, grabbed jerseys yeah. and things like that. And me, personally, I've never had an issue with that. I just I, – I, but, but that's because, like, I've had coaches like that in the past. Like, I've I've had worse coaches than that. It's just how it is. Um, so, the, the, for me, the whole Juwan situation, it was just – it's just a bad look. Like, I, Juwan knows he shouldn't have done it. Like, yeah. everyone knows he shouldn't have done it. Um, there's there's a couple things that could have changed in that situation. I thought that Greg Gard honestly could have just let Jawan blow past because he could kind of know your surrounding. Like, no, obviously that he's upset. Maybe just let Jawan pull his mask down and say, "I'm gonna remember that shit." And you're like, "Okay, like I'll remember that shit too, but I'm gonna keep it pushing." Yeah. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, like, you you just can't like swing at a dude. Like, whether it's a punch slap is what it is. Like I, I made the the metaphor, kind of the analogy that like I work in like the business world and there's been times where my clients have told the line and would I like to maybe you know take a little jab at them? Hell yeah I would, but I can't do that because of the position I'm in with the business and you know how it would look for everyone. Like I can't think about myself personally. You gotta think how it affects everybody. And you basically cannot just be the head coach of a division one basketball school, let alone a school with, you know, some good basketball, a good basketball team like Michigan, Michigan state, those type of teams, you just can't be swinging at people. So I, I'm glad that they just suspended them for the five games, move past it. The whole firing thing to me was just like blasphemy from the start. Um, and as far as Michigan state fans commenting on it, I'll tell you right now, we're going to take any little opening we can <laughs> to, get, to, to get to just get at to get at y'all because I know when Izzo was like pulling at Gabe Brown in the tournament yeah. last year, or when he was, or when he grabbed Aaron Henry a couple years ago, people were letting him have it. So the oh, fact yeah. that Jawan took a swing, we saw that as an opening to also get back. So that's that's basically <laughs> what that is. But I, I don't make too much of it. I feel like people are going to move on from it. Players got their suspensions. It's just kind of you know move on going forward, but. Hopefully he doesn't do anything like that again because I feel like Juwan's like racking up these issues. It, I think that that was like the bigger issue for me was that it's kind of been a pattern now. Like if he had like had crystal clear, you know, everything was not had not done anything, and then this was like the one time, and and you could just like kind of verify it or you know validate it by that, then okay. But the fact that like there was the Mark Turgeon thing before and that type of stuff, it made it tough. But I do know, like, I from people I've talked to, he is, like, beside himself that this happened. Like, absolutely distraught that he put Michigan in this situation and, like, put a bad, you know, black eye type of thing on, on Michigan. So I, I highly doubt that anything like that happens again because I, I think if there's anything even close to happening again, he's he will possibly be fired and right. he doesn't. And, you know, that's the last thing. And, and no one wants to see Jawan go out like that, whether no. you're a fan of Michigan or not. Like, that's the definition of going out sad. Like, yeah. you, you go out because of a situation like that, that's that's literally going to be with you for forever. And uh, speaking also from an outside perspective, it's just a bad look for Michigan because it, it you think it might come across as looking, like, tough. Like, oh, yeah, like, I'll fight you. I'll do whatever. But to me, that that if I'm another team, I'm like, you can get under that team's skin. 
Like, right. if, if you can upset the coach like this, you can get the players this upset. Like, to me, that's a sign of weakness. And by showing your sign of weakness, like your opponent can take advantage of that. So in a game of basketball where, like, bounces and stuff go your way, you can't be giving people mental edges or stuff to fuel totally. them. Like, that's, that's not something you want to do. Yeah, and there's definitely that aspect, not just in the game, not just with the coaches, but when I go to work and the guy next to me is a Sparty and he's <laughs> chirping me while I'm trying to get work done. And I'm like, dude, you need to shut up right now. Man. Like, <laughs> come on. So there's, you know, it's it's not just in the game, too. That's facts. I I'm I'm too I'm from the west side of the state and I have too many Sparty friends that I I can't let this game go to MSU. I cannot let MSU beat Michigan, have the one loss uh, in football, right? And then also sweep them in basketball. So that there's too much online for and, me. Uh, imagine, imagine your, your co-host on your podcast being a fan <laughs> of the opposite school. Like this, this, this game means way more to me because last year when we recorded, I was going through hell every week you know, <laughs> with them. So I, you know, there's a lot riding on this game for everybody. Well, it's too Absolutely. bad our other co-host can't be here because I know his wife is a Sparty, so he'll definitely hear it if they uh, if they win. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. He his wife's a diehard, and so she she like can't watch games with. I like we're actually bringing her to the game on Tuesday, which I was hesitant about, but you know had to be a good host here. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's just like I don't know the Michigan Michigan State rivalry is like. It has gone so back and forth. That's why this rivalry is so fun. And I think, like, legitimately over the past decade, it's been better than Duke, North Carolina. Like, I'll put my – like, it's maybe not year in, year out, but, like, it is – there have been so many top ten matchups or these games are for, uh, you know, the the lead in the conference or stuff like that, like – and it's just been every single game has been a pretty damn good game, you know? So it's, it's been like, even back to, uh, was it 2018? Um, when MSU beat the beat Michigan three times in it, or was that 2019? Yeah, no, it, no, 2018, 2018. Cause mm-hmm. that was when Michigan then went to the final four too. Yeah. So it's like both those teams are really fucking good teams, you know? And so, I just like I I love this rivalry in basketball even more than football sometimes because like both teams have gotten there so often during you know during the last 15 years too. Right. It can't be a rivalry unless both teams are to me good and it goes back and forth. Otherwise it's just a team you don't like that you play every single year. Like that's yeah. it's not a rivalry if it's all one sided. So yeah, it's uh it's definitely going to be interesting to see. I'm interested to see the adjustments as well, because it seems like Michigan played like a lot of drop coverage in that first game, and A.J. Hogar was able to get downhill. Um, and that mainly had to do with probably wanting to keep Hunter Dickinson out of foul trouble, I'm guessing. Yeah. But I'll be interested to see kind of what they do, especially because Michigan State lately has been running like a two-point guard type thing and having Tyson Walker off the ball more. So it'll be interesting to see how they do guard the pick and roll in this game because Tyson Walker has shown the ability as of late, thank God, and all the heavens above because that's what we were promised when he transferred here, <laughs> that he's been able to score off the ball screen and make people be honest with that. And then A.J. Hogarth has just been able to get downhill and use his bigger frame to finish. So, you know, we'll, I'm interested to see the adjustments uh, from Michigan as well. I wonder, too, because, you know, you were there uh, in Chrysler yesterday for the Michigan-Illinois game. They looked a step slow, Michigan did, on defense. You know, a lot of times it just, like, looked like it was a lack of defense, honestly. But they they were coming off ball screens, like, multiple steps slow, it looked to me. And I wonder if they'll get Frankie Collins in there. If Michigan State's running a two guard system, Devontae Jones is not that quick. So uh, we need Devontae Jones to, to get the offense rolling, but you know, Frankie Collins is much quicker than Devontae. And so I wonder if they'll have him come in on, on defense there too. I know the pick and roll is like, there was some stat out there from the first game where I think if Michigan hedged the pick and roll, they like stopped, um, you know, 80, 80% of the time or something. But when they didn't, it, you know, that was when Michigan state was, was killing them. So it, it definitely, those, those, adjustments will be interesting especially with phil martelli at the helm instead of juan howard too right 
Right. Um, so yeah, I, I did want to ask you too, what is what was the worst loss to Michigan in hopes over the past 10 years that you can think of? Oh the, damn, the worst. Uh, there's definitely been some tough ones, but to be <laughs> honest, to be honest with you, um, last year's one that we lost at your place, that hurt because, well, it hurt a little less because we ended up making the tournament, but that one really hurt because we, we were kind of in the same position that y'all were in. Like we needed that game and we got blasted by like <laughs> 30 and I was down you know, enormously. So that, to, to me recently, that was definitely the worst. Um, we were able to get another one when y'all came to our place, but also Eli Brooks got hurt in that game, yeah. which sucks to see, had to take advantage of it and win the basketball game, but that definitely had an effect on the basketball game. But yeah, anytime you go into Chrysler and you lose by 30 like that, that doesn't just leave you. That's a terrible feeling. I was looking at the uh, matchup predictor on ESPN, and it had about a two-thirds favor toward Michigan. So I, I'm kind of curious here. Do you think ESPN's just full of it? They're just throwing random numbers at a board, or do they really have a shot? I, you know what I think it is. It's really it's home court this year in college basketball. That's been a theme. Like for me, the best teams in the country this year, they've been able to win on the road. Like you. For this year in particular, I think it's a theme throughout college basketball, but this year in particular, like guys have games at home. Like they're, they can be Michael Jordan in game six at home, but <laughs> if they go on the road, then they're just, you know, they're nothing. But so I think them being at home. That's Caleb Houston, I think, too. Yeah. Like they're, his stats, I don't have them off the top of my head, but pretty sure he shoots like 45 close to 50 percent at home and then shoots like 20 percent on the on the road yeah it's it's something about playing at home so i you know i i think michigan at home you know michigan needing this game technically more than michigan state i can see why it could go that way but i'm gonna go ahead and go on record for y'all right now michigan <laughs> state's winning this basketball game after all this talked about after all that has been said just know that you know it's it's it's, it's coming home back to the bros <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, should we do a bet or something? Maybe, maybe I, we can. Do... I'm, a, I'm a bet man. Whatever y'all, hey, you, you name it. What you want? I know you guys are. You guys actually do bet on college basketball a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I have to. It's, it's in my blood. I'm, I, was, I, was, I was born to be a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> I like to gamble too. All right, we'll figure something else out offline, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll throw something down on Twitter or something. Oh, for but, sure. Uh, for sure. Um, hey man, we appreciate you coming on here. Um, we will, we will 100% be coming after you on Twitter though, if this <laughs> game goes to Michigan. So I, I take pride in being the one of the people on Twitter. I don't block people. I don't mute anybody. Like I don't, I don't do any of that. Like it's, 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 it's trash talk is basketball. You can say what you want. You're on Twitter to have an opinion. Yeah. Try not to be disrespectful, you know, just, you know, leave, leave, leave the disrespectful part out of it towards, you know, personal attacks and things like that. But yeah, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's a, uh, it's a rivalry game stuff happens. So I'm all, I'm all for it. I a hundred percent expect y'all to come at me. If you know, if y'all <laughs> win the basketball game, if you don't, then something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Vice versa. We expect the same too. So, all right. Well, thanks. Thanks again. Um, tell the people one more time where they can follow you at and see all your stuff. Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at Carter Elliott. That's with two L's and two T's and then two underscores. And then you can follow us, uh, my podcast, at Sleepers Media. That's on Twitter, YouTube as well. Got a couple good things on there. Uh, we just had Kellen Grady from Kentucky on, nice. uh, I think, two weeks ago. So that was a really cool interview. Uh, I suggest everyone check that out on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, that's where we post all of our content. Awesome. And you can follow us at blue by 90 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're on the Mason brew YouTube channel, as well as on their podcast platform where you can find a bunch of other podcasts too. We appreciate you guys listening. Go blue. Go blue. Go green. <laughs>